that picture of power, the Triple Crown winner. Hi everyone, I'm Chris Fowler and welcome to Run for the Crown on ESPN Classic. The year is 1979 and in horse racing it's already been a glorious decade. Three horses have won the Triple Crown of the 70s, Secretariat, Seattle Slough and Affirmed. Now in 1979 there seems to be another capable of the feat. A year earlier, Baltimore socialites Harry, Teresa and Tom Meyerhoff bought a yearling for just $37,000 at auction. It would certainly turn out to be a cheap but spectacular bid, and thus his name. The Colt is an immediate success, but entering the 79 Kentucky Derby, the racing community remains skeptical of spectacular bid's pedigree and the choice of jockey, 19-year-old Ronnie Franklin. But it's hard to question the results. The Maryland-trained Colt had been hard to beat. Coming into the Derby, Spectacular Bid had strung together 10 consecutive wins, often blowing away the competition with his amazing speed. But despite his decisive victories, the Colt wasn't always the lead story. The other thing that was most interesting about Spectacular Bid was his jockey, uh, young Ron Franklin, who had drug problems and, and uh, uh, who was a kid that Bud Delp you know, trained and rehabilitated just as much as Bud Delp trained Spectacular Bid. Ronnie Franklin's rise to the forefront of horse racing had been a mercurial one. I was in the 11th grade in senior high school, and I decided to go to Swatton for, um, for me, so I quit school. And I got a job working in a fast food restaurant at Roy Rogers, and I worked there for a while, and I didn't like that too much, so I needed to find something better for me to do. So I had a friend that lived up the street from me, and he took me out to the racetrack. So one day, I said to my brother, Dick, I said, uh, who is that kid? He said, his name is Ronnie Franklin. I said, well, he looks like he's the right size to be a jockey, and Dick laughed. He says, I think that's what he's got in mind. <laughs> so he was such a pleasant kid, and work, 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 didn't stop working, and three, I mean, three years, he just worked his butt off. Grover Buddy Delp hired Franklin, took him into his home like a son, and turned him into a jockey. Franklin excelled and became the champion apprentice jockey of 1978. But in March of 1979, just seven weeks before the Kentucky Derby, Franklin's run in the Florida Derby in Miami almost ended his brief career on Spectacular Bid. There's a half a mile to go. It's musical fantasy by three parts of the length. Spectacular bid, rushes up on the rail out of challenge for the lead. Lot of gold on the outside, third. As the field goes into the far turn, Spectacular bid is boxed in, and Franklin eases him back and swings to the outside. Now midway on the turn, it's lot of gold. In on the rail. Turning into the home stretch, Spectacular bid is four horses out from the rail. Can even the greatest of thoroughbreds overcome being taken up twice and losing that much ground? Jockey Franklin goes to the whip, and Spectacular Bid demonstrates what makes a super champion. He draws to win by an incredible four and a half lengths. Despite the win, Buddy Delp called Franklin an idiot and threatened to take him off the bid because he fell for a trap as the other jockeys boxed him in. Nevertheless, Delp decided to stay with the 19-year-old for the upcoming Kentucky Derby instead of a change to a more seasoned jockey. He's moving fast. And down the stretch they come. Photo finish. And they're up. From between horses, Shamgo going for the lead on the extreme outside. A lot of gold ranging up. And it's General Assembly now passing the stands for the first time. That sham go along the rail, general assembly between horses, and a lot of gold on the outside, and flying pastries right there. Four of them across the track, and there's one mile to go. On the inside now, it's general assembly. Sham go on the rail, flying pastry third, then a lot of gold on the outside, fourth. Great Redeemer, surprisingly, up in fifth position. Then it's King Celebrity, sixth on the outside. Spectacular bid 
is seventh. Screen King moves through eighth along the rail. Golden Act is ninth by a head. And Sir Ivor again is tenth on the outside as they race on to the back stretch. And it's Shamgo holding on to the lead by oh, about half a length. And General Assembly on the outside is second by three and a half. Then it's Lot of Gold, third by a length and a quarter. And on the inside, Great Redeemer is fourth by three parts of a length. Then on the outside, Flying Paster, fifth by a head. King Celebrity moves through with a rush now sixth. Spectacular bid is seventh and closing ground. That's the bid right alongside the Paster as they move to the half-mile pole. Shamgo has the lead from between horses. That's General Assembly. There goes Flying Paster. Don Pierce puts Flying Paster in gear on the outside. After that, it's King Celebrity. Now they're on the far turn, and Spectacular Bid also makes a move. Three-eighths of a mile to go. It's General Assembly holding on to the lead on the inside. Between horses, that's Flying Paster, and the, on the outside, there goes the bid. So it's the bid on the outside. Spectacular Bid gets the lead by a head. General Assembly on the inside, second, and Flying Paster is third, and down the stretch they come, and it's Spectacular Bid taking the lead by a length and a half. On the inside, General Assembly is second. Flying Paster drops back on the outside. Golden Act coming on, but there's a 16th of a mile to go, and Spectacular Bid is going to win the 105th running of the Kentucky Derby. Spectacular Bid doesn't run Franklin aboard. General Assembly second under the wire. After that, it was Golden Act and King Celebrity. So about seventh around the clubhouse turn, Ronnie Franklin made a big move with the bid on the far turn and on to victory. Time on the board, two minutes, two and two-fifths seconds. Spectacular Bid's winning derby margin of two and three-quarters lengths over General Assembly was greater than those of the last three Triple Crown winners, Secretariat, Seattle Slough, and Affirmed. Now, Franklin's poor ride in the Florida Derby seemed a distant memory. The Bid was on his way towards racing immortality. His next challenge would be the Preakness, and for Ronnie Franklin, his next challenge would be a more experienced adversary. We'll return in a moment to Run for the Crown 1979. Welcome back to Run for the Crown 1979. After a spectacular bid won the Kentucky Derby, the Meyerhoff family, Bud Delp, and Ron Franklin returned home to Maryland and prepared for the Preakness Stakes. The bid had become as much of a hero in Baltimore as Brooks Robinson or Johnny Unitas, and at 1 to 10 odds, he was ready for a spectacular homecoming. He's moving fast. And down the stretch they come. Photo finish. The last horse, General Assembly, the one most folks think is going to rush out and take the early lead, is the last one in this field of five to move into line. They all carry 126 pounds, and they're up. And on the outside, that's General Assembly with Flying Paster along the rail and Screen King third. Spectacular bid on the inside is fourth. Golden Act is fifth. Passing the stance for the first time is Speed Duel. It's Flying Paster on the rail and General Assembly on the outside. They're four lengths in front of Screen King, who is third. Then it's Spectacular bid racing far away from the rail and Golden Act is fifth as they round the clubhouse turn. It's Flying Paster on the rail. General Assembly on the outside, those two stride for strides. A blistering early pace, General Assembly in front now by a head. Flying Paster on the inside, second by three and a half lengths. Screen King is third, and Spectacular bid fourth, followed by Golden Act. They straighten away down the backstretch. First quarter in 23 and two fifth seconds, exactly the same as the track record. Now down the backstretch, and it's General Assembly showing the way three parts of a length. Flying Paster along the inside, a second length and a half. Screen King is right there, third, and on the far outside, Spectacular Bid is fourth and charging up. Then a gap of four, and it's Golden Act. The quintet moves past the half-mile pole, tightly bunched. There goes Spectacular Bid on the outside. Spectacular Bid takes the lead, and Flying Paster is in second position. The Bid in front, the Paster second. General Assembly drops back third. Screen King on the outside is fourth, and Golden Act is fifth. As they move to the top of the stretch, Spectacular Bid draws away. Now in front by four, Screen King takes up the chase, second on the outside. Flying Paster drops back, and Golden Act moves to on the rail, and down the stretch they come, and Spectacular Bid opens up a five-length lead. Golden Act along the inside is now second, Screen King is third, and as they move into the final 16th of the line, it's Spectacular Bid, Ronnie Franklin aboard, and Spectacular Bid is eased up to the wire to win the 104th running of the Creek Mistakes by five lengths. It's Golden Act second, followed by Screen King third, then Flying Paster and General 
assembly. The time on the board, one minute 54 and one fifth seconds, only one fifth of a second off the track record and better by a fifth than a firm's preakness last year. In his post-race interview with Jim McKay and Howard Cosell, Ron Franklin went out of his way to be critical of the ride by Screen Kings jockey Angel Corduro Jr. What's happening there, Ronnie? Well, he's in good stride right here, and we're going to get right outside of Screen King just to make sure we got it. So he brought his horse way out right now, and I'm surprised at him because that's not really good sportsmanship. He did take his horse way out down the backside. He took him clear out to the outside fence, and to me, that's not really good sportsmanship. So you felt Cordero was out to make trouble for you? No, no, I'm not going to say that. I'm not, you know, I don't want to start no trouble or nothing. He's a nice guy and everything, and he's just doing his job. But Franklin truly felt Cordero was doing more than just his job, as Cordero had been one of the jockeys that boxed Franklin in at the Florida Derby just two months before. Franklin had lodged a complaint against Cordero after the Miami race, and the bad blood between the two spilled over into the Preakness Stakes. Well, a Spectacular Bay was a very good horse, uh, and he had a very young rider on him. Um, his rider didn't have the patience or the coolness that Steve Cotton did have before. Uh, he didn't make many friends for some reason or other. Ron Franklin had a, a, a dicey career with Spectacular Bid. He was criticized early for his rides. The Derby was one. The Preakness was one. Then he became overconfident. Spectacular Bid was now ready for the grueling Belmont Stakes, but both he and Ronnie Franklin's confidence would be tested long before post time. We'll return in a moment to Run for the Crown 1979. We now return to Run for the Crown 1979. Clouds of controversy hung over Ron Franklin at Belmont Park on the day of Spectacular Bid's biggest race. Just three days before the Belmont, Franklin's two-month war of words with Angel Cordero Jr. had escalated into a war of fisticuffs. We rode on a race before, the, the big race, and um, I rode, we was riding on a two-year-old race, and my horse broke in and made contact with him. And I said to myself, uh-oh, now, we, now we're really into it, because he's probably going to think I did it on purpose. So when we came back after the race, we did get into a fight. And then we went back to the stewards and uh, came back to the room and got into a fight again. If he's not man enough to do it on the ground, on his own two feet and his own two hands, well, well, then I'd have to call him a chicken because that's not the way I am. I'm not going to try to hurt nobody up on a 1,200-pound animal. The way I'm going to do it is on the ground with my two bare hands. What happened Wednesday is a thing that happened here every day. It just happened to me and Franklin. And he was uh, blow up in very big proportion. As the race neared post time, Ron Franklin focused his attention away from Cordero and onto his anxious horse. And that man in the red coat is the major head of this parade, Jimmy Daly. Can you hear me, Jim Daly? Yes, I can. Jim, your major job is to see if there's any problem shaping up, any horses getting difficult to handle. How is the field now? Spectacular bid seems to be on his toes, sweating a little bit. This crowd's got him a little excited. You think the crowd here that close to him has got him a little on edge and yes, he's trotting? Yes, he's, he's doing a little jig on the way to the post here and the jock's getting tied on, fixing his stirrups. The rest of the field seems to be going perfect. Everyone's settled down pretty good. He looks like the only horse on his toes. Got there 10 minutes to 6. And I get there and the groom said uh, my assistant trainer was there too. And uh, my, my groom, uh, Herman Hall, said this horse can't put his foot down. So I went in real quick and uh, picked up his foot, and there was this pin stuck in the, in the sole of his foot about half inch, maybe, or better. He's moving fast. And down the stretch they come. Photo finish. And they're off. 
King Celebrity on the outside is Gallant Best. Gallant Best takes the lead now by a neck on the inside again. A spectacular bid. Then Golden Act farther out is Coastal and a Mystic Era. Past the stands for the first time now. It's Gallant Best leading the way by two. Spectacular bid is second by a length on the outside is Coastal in third. Golden Act racing fourth General Assembly in fifth by two. Along the inside is King Celebrity followed by Screen King and Mystic Era around the far turn. Gallant Best has the lead by four. It's Spectacular bid in second by a length and General Assembly is third by a half length. On the outside, Coastal in fourth by a length and a half. Golden Act in fifth by four. Then King Celebrity is sixth by two. Screen King in seventh and Mystic Era is eighth. The first quarter in 23 and two. They are really blazing away onto the backstretch now and Gallant Best has the lead but by only a neck. Moving up on the outside now is Spectacular Bid and Spectacular Bid on the outside puts ahead in front. Gallant Best on the rail back into second now by three. Spectacular Bid draws clear now by a full length. Gallant Best on the rail in second by four. General Assembly is third by three. Then Coastal in fourth by a length and a half. Golden Act on the outside in fifth by four. King Celebrity in fifth on the outside is Screen King followed by Mystic Era. Down the back stretch, the half in 47 and three, three quarters and one, 11 and one. They continue to set a toward pace. It is spectacular bit in front by three. Gallant Best on the outside, but there goes General Assembly on the inside. General Assembly is now second by a half length. Gallant Best dropping back in second by a length and a half. Coastal moving up now in third. Golden Act also gaining ground around the far turn. Spectacular bit has the lead by two. General Assembly is second by a length. Gallant Best still in third by a neck. Golden Act on the outside in fourth. Coastal on the rail. There goes Screen King also moving up around the far turn. It is spectacular bid in command by three. General Assembly is second by a length. Golden Act on the outside moving up in third. Coastal gains ground on the rail at the top of the stretch. It is spectacular bid. He has the lead by three. Coastal on the inside is moving up toward leader now and down the stretch. Spectacular bid on the outside. It is Coastal on the inside. Those two now vying for the lead and Coastal puts ahead in front. Spectacular bid back into second. Golden Act is third approaching the 16th pole. It is an upset now. Coastal has the lead by three. Spectacular bid on the inside. Coastal on the outside. It is Coastal in front. And under the wire, an upset in this, the Belmont Stakes. Coastal, the supplemented horse. Coastal, owned by William Hagen Perry, trained by David Whiteley, ridden by Ruben Hernandez. The upset winner of the Belmont Stakes. A very tight photo between Spectacular Bid and Golden Act for place and show positions in the Belmont. The time for the race, 2 minutes, 28 and 3 fifth seconds. Although and Coastal now, had won his last three races at Belmont Park, his upset win over Spectacular Bid took most experts by surprise. In their previous meetings in September, the Bid had beaten Coastal by 17 lengths. Experts agree that the Bid was a superior horse, but differ as to what prevented him from winning the Belmont on this day. If Spectacular Bid had been perfectly healthy uh, and, had, and not had any problems, he might have won, uh, won the Belmont too. But, but you, you never know for sure about that race because no horse that's running the Belmont has ever run that distance before. Had uh, the pin not gone in the foot, he would have won no matter how he rode him because when he came back, he couldn't wiggle. He was so sore. From, it started hurting him, and uh, he bruised the other foot by using it more than the other one. So um, I had a very lame horse. Franklin's critics don't believe Delp's claim that the bid stepped on a pin. Rather, they say, the bid's spectacular run to glory ended because of Ron Franklin. I don't want to be one to point a finger. The Achilles heel, they felt that if Franklin pushed the button too early, moved too soon, it might compromise him. When I saw three quarters and 111 a mile and 36, I thought Golden Act actually was going to win the race then. It was a marvelous run race and I'm afraid young Franklin is in for a lot of criticism. Well Back in what way do you think? I thought he pulled the trigger a little bit too fast. I don't know if I buy the story about the nail on his foot because he didn't bow on him to the 16th pole. I just thought that if he waited a little bit he might have won it. The ride that he gave him when they said that uh, you know he stepped on something in the Belmont and uh, he you know he stepped in something you know he had Ronnie Franklin on him. A victory or a defeat, I mean, it, so many things go into it. In the Derby and the Preakness, it was spectacular bid and his sheer power and class and speed that won those races. In spite of the rider, 
in the Belmont, spectacular bid lost because of jockey Ron Franklin. The pressure to win the Triple Crown may have been too great for Franklin. Nine days after the disappointing loss at the Belmont, Ron Franklin was arrested for possessing cocaine. Things were building up on me. I didn't know who to turn to. I probably should have turned to Bud, and I wished I would have now. now. And I realize that now, but no, I ran away and I turned to drugs. Ron Franklin's career with the bid was over. We'll return in a moment to Run for the Crown, 1979. After spectacular bids sprinted to the front early in the Belmont, only to fade in the stretch, critics said the bids team had gotten carried away with its success and wanted to see if Secretariat's 31-length winning margin at the 73 Belmont could be broken. So, your horse won't be remembered with Secretariat, one reporter said to trainer Buddy Delp. Nope, Delp replied, he sure won't be, but I'll remember him pretty good. One year later, spectacular bid ensured he would in fact be remembered. The Colt won all nine of his starts as a four-year-old, was named 1980 Horse of the Year, and retired with record earnings of $2.7 million. Thanks for watching Run for the Crown. For everyone at ESPN Classic, I'm Chris Fowler. Nobody comes near Secretariat in the Triple Crown, but I bring a spectacular bid right up around Affirmed and, and uh, Seattle Slough in terms of talent. But there's a sixteenth of a mile to go, and Spectacular Bid is going to win the 105th running of the Kentucky Derby. It's Spectacular Bid, Ronnie Franklin aboard, and Spectacular Bid is eased up to the wire to win the 104th running of the Creek Mistake. It is Spectacular Bid, he has the lead by three. Those two now vying for the lead at Coastal, puts ahead in front. Coastal has the lead by three. It is an upset now, it is Coastal in front. And under the wire, an upset in this, the Belmont Stakes Coastal. As I look back, Spectacular Bid becomes even bigger in history. He should have won the Triple Crown, and it's a shame he didn't.